Hey everybody, Escape211 here, and uh, I am joined by Red Torch today. So this is a little bit of a different video, and uh, you know it's been a little while since I've talked with Red Torch, and obviously conditions are very different, and we're all concerned about him and the Mecarina team. So I really just want to turn it over to him, let him share a little bit of what's been going on, his experience through all of this over in the Ukraine, and uh, just to you know hear his his story. So. Red, uh, glad to have you, and I'm glad it, it seems like you're safe. But yeah, please let us know what's going on for you. All right, thank you. I'm so pleased to, to be here with you, and I'm so excited to tell this story to the whole uh, maker and the community. And uh, uh, like, yeah, uh, I will tell you what happened from the, my perspective of you and where I'm now. And where is the maker and the team now? And uh, how does the game work now? Uh, what are the future plans about uh, uh, the game? And uh, what changes we have taken so far? So I think that uh, that would be interesting for everybody. Okay. So um, what happened actually? February 24th, uh, Five o'clock in the morning, I was at home with my wife and we were sleeping in our bedroom, like all the ordinary people at 5 a.m. in the clock. Right. And, uh, you know, we have those windows with the sound protection. So when you close the window, you can't hear any noise from the street. And uh, it helps you when you work and you must sit like uh, quietly and so on. And uh, I started hearing uh, the very loud noise from the outside. And I woke up and I, I had no clue what's going on. I saw that there was a car incident or, or, or I don't know, or police or something. And I opened the window and, I, and the noise uh, was terrible in the street. And I, I still was confused. What's the problem? And I just looked up and I saw the missiles flying over my house, like the military missiles. And uh, the, the noise and the sounds of explosions and the flashes, uh, it was dark part of the day and the flashes were so bright, like it was the day, daytime light daytime and uh, we were of course scared and, and, and confused and it was like uh, excuse me but what the hell is going on yeah. it's 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 5 a.m and uh, we started uh, receiving the emergency messages that the uh, city is under shelling like uh, stay alert stay aware and nobody was prepared for that and uh uh, our president told that uh, this moment is a moment when the Russia invaded Ukraine and started the war, just out of nothing. Russia started the war with Ukraine, like we were shocked. And uh, Kharkiv, if you look at the Google Maps, Kharkiv is really close to the Russian border. It's just about 50 kilometers from the Kharkiv to the Russia. Right, and, and that's where you are, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, our living district, uh, it's uh, like a huge, huge suburb. Uh, it's a uh, territory just free from any infrastructure at all. There are no fabrics, uh, no factories, no military infrastructure, no military bases, just uh, schools, uh, living uh, houses, uh, kindergartens, shops, malls, and so on. Like, no, we, we have nothing military, but they decided that uh, this living district is full of uh, military infrastructure, and they started shelling, uh, which is actually a huge uh, violation of international law and even a uh, rules of wars because none of the countries are allowed to do that uh, yeah and uh, we were uh, a good target for them because our district is like city is of a round shape and and our district is located is looking just in front of the russian border you know and it was so easy for them to reach us by the missiles mm. and uh, we had 
nothing to do just to pack the bags like emergency bags and uh, quickly uh, run for for our lives and me with my wife with uh, three cats mm. that that we, that we love so much and yeah. Whole, like yeah luckily they are okay now uh, we ran down um, to the subway station uh, because uh, they uh, the subway is a uh, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, down down below. It's uh, underground. underground, yeah, and, and yeah. It's like underground. It's closed space, and it's safe there. And we uh, went to my um, like mother-in-law. Uh, we dropped cats in her apartment, and uh, we this. I was like very worried about my wife, and uh, I had nothing. I have no better idea that I told that we have to leave the city right now, but I don't. Uh, I don't have a car, and the only way to escape from the city was to go to rail railway station. And uh, none of the public transport worked; uh, everything was closed, and we made uh, all the way long uh, on our feet with our bags. And uh, sometimes when we were walking down to the railway station, uh, another part of missiles were flying just above us. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was like terrific frustration when you know this, when you are all of a sudden in the circumstance that you can't control, you can't predict, and you feel yourself like you are just nothing. And th there is not no way to escape, nowhere to hide, nowhere to protect, because like uh, you understand that the damage of missile and uh, you like stay naked in front of the missiles. Uh, yes, and uh, the whole population of uh, the city, everyone was scared. Everyone just uh, ran down to any shelters, any places where we, they can feel safe and so on so we came to the railway station and uh, we took the train and during the next two days we were on the train on the way on the western part of ukraine which is closer to uh poland uh, slovakia and hungary uh, and these uh, territories uh, still like uh, more more safe than the rest of the than the rest of the east part of the country, which is closer to Russia. Yeah, and uh, uh, it was a hard way. And uh, the hardest part was to realize that you have left your life, everything that you have earned, your apartments, everything you had, you just left there, and you still don't know if you can ever go back uh, yeah and uh, it's gotta feel like a it, bad dream you know it's just that's crazy yeah imagine i'm like 32 and uh i've been working hard to have the apartment to make a makeover and so on and so on to make some savings and the rest of the thing and in just a second because of this russian war we have nothing and the realization of this moment and your conscience is scared and uh, this is uh, something that I, I, I can't like express. I, I don't want nobody to feel it because yeah. uh, war is, have never been and will never be an option. War is not an option. We must learn it and the history proves that. Yeah. So, uh, this is uh, my story in a nutshell. Uh, like I said, now I'm not in Kharkiv, I'm out of the office, and uh, I had to relocate to the western part of the country. Uh, for now, I have some place to stay in, and uh, but a lot of people are coming, coming to this uh, part of the country because uh, women uh, can leave, women, children, uh, el people who are elder than 60 years old, uh, people with disabilities, uh, 
can leave Ukraine and cross the border, but uh, of course, men who are eligible or suitable for the military service, they cannot. So that's why I still here and uh, waiting for the outcome of this war. And um, I I'm trying personally support uh, people here, and we support. Uh, I give my personal support to. Uh, militaries to just the civil people to children kids and so on because this uh, war like uh, united us ukrainians inside of our country and we are you know we are super united now we help each other constantly and uh, i i even uh, never expected that we can be so united mm-hmm. so so yes, they thought the Russia thought that they will broke us down, but the vice versa. We are getting stronger, and we are in the very strong uh, unity. We are like truly united nation right now. That that's for sure. Yeah, that's really uh, good. Yeah, and uh, I'm so glad to be back to work. Oh, like uh, really, guys, I missed you so much. I missed all your comments and ideas, discussions, and all the activities that uh, we had before. Uh, yeah, it's good to be uh, back to war, or oh, I'm sorry, back to work. And, uh, you know, during the war, everybody must do what they can do best. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's why I'm trying to turn in into the work, into the helping uh, uh, those who are in need. and. Uh, I think that and I and the rest of the Ukrainians, we will do that until the very end, until this uh, stupid war just ends and uh, Russia leaves our country and none of the Russian troops ever step on our earth. Right. Well, so, yeah. Hear that there's somewhere like at least you're, I don't know, I guess kind of safe for now. I know that things are still tough and you're kind of on the edge of your seat uh that's got to be ridiculous or, or just really hard to live with um but i i guess i could ask too what about the rest of your your team um how are they doing do you know where they are are you able to keep in contact um yeah i will tell you just a little bit later i just wanted to tell about it from the other side like um uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back to the work, and I have uh, like uh, an announcement oh. that uh, from from now on we do not collaborate with content creators from Russian Federation. We have closed the program for Russian uh, citizens. They are not allowed to enter the content creators program, and th- those who were accepted, we had to say goodbye to them. Mm. Yeah, but from the other side, um, we still can have Russian-speaking content creators, which is a different thing because personally, I have grown up in the Russian-speaking family, but our national language is Ukrainian, so we are like bilingual, but uh, people uh, with uh, uh, people from Russian Federation can be official content creators of Mecarina. Right. And I know you guys also uh, uh, stopped the transactions and the store availability of uh, a lot of your titles from Russia as well. Yeah, I will I will tell that also. Uh, about the team. Um, as you understand that the team has been uh, like div- divided uh separated because of people had to ensure the security for their families loved ones pets and so on and uh, most of the team uh, like uh, has been spread across the country uh, because uh, some of them had to move to european union uh, and uh, yeah for instance like i had to Sent my wife and our all of our, our women from our family with kids. We sent them to European Union and 
we stay here. And it took like a lot of time to settle down here in the western part of the country where to find a place to live in and and uh, and like you know to maintain <laughs> to reinvent your lifestyle and so on. So it took uh, some time before we started uh, thinking and uh, like uh, connecting. Uh, with each other, to each other, reaching out to each other. Like now, we are communicating online. Uh, but if you remember, uh, we had a COVID nineteen virus outbreak, and uh, during this virus outbreak, we received, uh, and as a company and as a team, we received a very precious and a very useful experience of remote work. Right. So. Yeah, because of this experience, we like uh, we are operating fully, even remotely. Oh, that's so good. this, uh, yeah, that's good. Good to hear. Yeah. And uh, another big things I want to tell to uh, our company for their help, support, and assistance because uh, they made a hotline for employees where we can just call and address any issues we uh, experience have and they are doing their best to help us we receive daily updates on what is happening in country what is happening in the region where you stay what is happening uh, in the company and and so on and so on we are not abandoned once again we are more strong and united like never before uh, employees who are on the road they also collaborate with each other we share apartments with each other. We share them. We share some safe uh, routes, some advices, and so on and so on. Uh, moreover, company helps our employees to cross the border, uh, like uh, they organize some sort of evacuation routes for people. And like I said before, men who uh, men from 18 and up to 60 years old are not allowed, are not permitted to leave uh, the country due to full-scale mobilization. But mm. that, but these are the rules and we have to accept them because this is a war. That's not, not a joke. Uh, yeah, and um, since we are uh, well-known how to work remotely, it's not a big uh, like a problem for us to stay online. And uh, coming from that, uh, let's speak about uh, how do the games actually work now, and especially the Macarena, because I think that you mentioned that for 20 days, we, we did not drop any updates because uh, we had no technical possibility to do that. Right. Understandable, of course. But yeah. Um, yeah. It... Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can... Um... You can let us know. I, I, I am curious as to how this is going to work. I know you guys are able to work remotely, but uh, I know a lot of people are curious as to what's the, the best course of action now. So, uh, Yes, uh, the game is still in the development. This is, we must all understand that the game is in the development, but we had to move back some of the updates we planned before because of the war, because of any, uh, because of more other circumstances that we could not uh, predict and uh, get over them immediately. Yeah. And of course, before uh, getting back to work, uh, we had to make sure that all of the employees are completely safe and they have safe places to proceed working. Yeah. But the uh, development process, piece by piece, is uh, turning on. Uh, what about the events? Uh, all the events will be brought back to the game after a while. Like you know that uh, anyway, if uh, we, <laughs> we were shelling by your uh, uh, feedback, and so like I know you, we have a tough relations uh, and uh, uh, about the events. But uh, anyway, we are going to bring them back to the game soon. And we just ask you to wait a little bit more before the new content is uh, dropping back to the game. Yeah. Uh, no, that's yeah, because, understandable. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, 
more like most of this content is uh, ready and it's just waiting for deployment uh, but before that uh, guys uh, still need to, to check and make sure that it you know uh, it, they can launch it properly and it will be de deployed properly and it will run in the game smoothly because we had the experience of remote work but now we understand that this remote work will have some changes and uh, we had to put on more efforts to stabilize all the things yeah uh, what what about the bugs and improvements uh, like i said the team is slowly and accurately getting back to the to the issues that you have reported and they will keep studying solutions for the major issues and complain. All the reports are saved. All the things that you have reported, guys, they are saved. Nothing is lost. And uh, guys will check them once they have uh, time and uh, opportunity to dive deeply into the box uh, fixes. So, like, no worries, you know, uh, I want to ensure that nothing is lost. Uh, Platinum Play release. You know that uh, we made an announcement sometime before that the Mech Arena is going to be released on Platinum Play, which is a, a standalone application from uh, Platinum for the desktop for Windows and uh, Mac OS. And uh, like, yeah, we still have uh, a plan to release the game on the play, 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 on play platform. But once again, the release, you will have to wait a little bit more. Because, uh, you know, because of the war. Uh, but the, the, this release is not cancelled. This is important for, for you to know. And uh, what about the feedback? We are getting back to our standard feedback process procedure. So you're welcome again with all the sorts and ideas, complaints you have for us. You're welcome back. We will process it, discuss it, and uh, get back to the feedback flow, feedback process flow like we had before. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um... Honestly, I mean, I uh, I'm so glad to hear that everybody's still able to to work and work on stuff. Uh, of course, I I know that we have to be patient on stuff, and I think everyone will be. That's no problem, at least for me. I I feel like you know uh, that's true of everybody. Just to to be patient. Obviously, you have more important stuff going on, and and your safety is the most important. And I'm glad to hear that you know you are somewhere where you can be you know, safe and, and the rest of the team is either safe out of the country or somewhere able to work. So that's of course the most important. Um, I will say <laughs> probably because otherwise people ask comments if I don't say something, since I'm able to talk to you, uh, like future plans, things down the road, like new mechs, weapons, clans, other functions. I don't know if there's anything you can say, obviously, again, anything you would say related to that would be pushed back too, but I fear I'll probably get comments about it if I don't say something. So um, I feel I should ask about that as well. But Okay, the future plans. Uh, first of all, and furthermore, I once again want to state that the game is definitely stays active in life. We have no plans on canceling or stopping the development process. Game is alive and it will have updates soon. Awesome. Like uh, we, now we are doing our best to maintain the major life systems of the game. Yeah, and we, we can't start dropping the updates because we have to sure make sure that all the major life system of the games are properly arranged. All right. And of course, we had plans for the new weapons, for the new mechs for the new uh, activities and I can't be specific. I can't tell what what Mac is going to be the next uh, or what the weapon, but uh, soon you will get all the details. 
So right. just uh, you can ask uh, the guys just to wait a bit and uh, uh, walk a little bit in our shoes and to understand why we had to postpone the update. Yeah, very understandable. So everybody be patient. Yeah. Please understand uh, that they're doing. I'm just, I'm amazed still that we're able to to run the game and and at a pretty normal capacity, even though updates may come in a little bit slower than normal. It's still amazing that you guys are are able to continue working in this current condition. So that's amazing. Yeah, thanks a lot. This is because of your support, because we see that people really uh, love this game and we can't just abandon the community in a one click. So we will stay with you, of course. And uh, the company uh, made uh, a statement that uh, Plarium applications will be deleted from the Russian and Belarus app stores. And we no longer take a Russian currency, Russian ruble, ruble, they call it ruble, mm -hmm. uh, as a payment currency in our games. So they okay. just can't pay in the, in the, with rubles, yes. And they, with the next update, uh, if to say it like, uh, to say it in, like in a short way, we just simply cut them off and they won't get any updates and they won't be able to uh, download games from the stores. Of course, you may say that they may find some ways to overcome this obstacle and so on, that our, our team is well known about that and they will find a way how to cut this uh ways also so like no worries and uh like personally i uh support this company step and i think that they made the right choice because of this aggression because of this war uh there is no other way right so I think that, uh, and the whole world community is united, uh, and uh, they stand by the people of Ukraine. They stand by Ukraine. They stand by the democracy. They stand by our sovereignty. They they help us a lot, and of course we also understand that the, the whole unity must be supported, and from our side also, because personally I never expected to get that huge response from the world, huge response from the whole world community. And I'm, you know, I'm so grateful for uh, everyone who supports us from the outside, from the other countries. And it's really amazing. And you, like, I think if we had no such a support for, from the outside world, I don't even know if I could just be now alive and talking to you. So thank you to the world, thank you to our allies and for everything they do and everything they will do. And uh, it's uh, like a disaster for us, but it's a good lesson for the whole world. And uh, we should stay strong and be united like never before. So Absolutely. from the other side, yeah, war makes the distractions and uh, the awful things. But from the other side, people start you know, my conscience have turned from the outside, from from top to bottom. And I think the same thing happened in the world. So that's why we have to stay strong and united to come over to go and uh, went through all these uh, things. And uh, I think that uh, this Russian uh, will leave our country really soon. Because I, I can't tell you like more details, but what I see is that clearly that they are going to leave us alone soon and we'll never get back to our Earth. Well, let's hope so. I mean, I, I would love for this to end soon for you to hopefully get back to somewhat of a normal life and back to your home and everything and see your family. Um, but you did mention uh, support and uh, I wanted to also mention to people, if you want to support, we'll leave some links below. This is not like military support. This is to support the people of the Ukraine and just, you know, being able to live during this time where they are. Um, so if you want to support in that way, we'll leave some links for that as well. 
Yeah, yeah uh, like anybody in the world can support the Ukrainian Red Cross Society, which is uh, supported by international Red Cross organization that uh, helps us to prevent the humanitarian uh, catastrophe in Ukraine because some of the some parts of the country and uh, they suffer because in, in some cities uh, there is no, for instance, no water. People can't get water. Mm. And and Russian troops just stay and they don't allow them to uh, get closer to the pipeline so people could get some water. So these are terrible things. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, the international uh, uh, charity organization have access to help those people. And like it's important. And if you want to help somebody, you can just do it anytime. And direct relief, direct relief, of course, and voice of children, because a lot of children are now in need in Ukraine. And uh, like any piece of help, even in the smallest, is uh, very, very crucial because, you know, the wall is built with many pieces. And if we still be united, we will, we will come over all the things very soon, get the victory. And the whole world once again learns a very good lesson that the war is never an option. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's all that I wanted to say to ensure that, guys, we are getting back to life. We are getting back to you. We will drop the update as soon as possible, and nothing can stop us. We will go to the victory. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Red, it's been so good talking to you. I mean, I feel like any day I'm able to at least hear something from you is good just to know that you're still safe um, and that I can hear from you, which is good. Um, so I, I, you know, our thoughts and our prayers are with you and your team, as well as, like we said, support. So if you guys want to support, we'll leave links below. Um, but, you know, that's that's really all we wanted to cover for today. So thank you so much for taking some time out, Red. Um, you know, continue to stay safe and, uh, you know, give our same thoughts to the rest of your team. And, uh, yeah, that's all we wanted to say for this one, guys. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm a little bit, you know, thrilled. Uh, I was trying uh, to stay alert and, uh, I think that everybody will get my words right. And I was so happy and pleased to talk to you and deliver these important messages to everyone to the world and the maker in the community as well so stay safe take care and uh, remember that war is not an option definitely not all right everybody we'll see you later have a good day bye bye